Do you read me? Be advised, you are coming in weak and unreadable. Say again, Con Tower. This is Con. Do you read me, old? Pacho, this is Con Tower. I read you, Lima Charlie. Con Tower, Con Tower. Request permission to launch and commence a field up. Over. Stand by. Pacho, permission granted. Say again, permission granted. Pacho, that. Launching podcast in three, two. You are now entering the field up with your host, Pacho Correa. Chief Warrant Officer 3, United States Marine Corps retired. Get some. All right. Get some. All right. Let me move my camera out of the way. I don't want to show you my coffee maker in the background. Hey, how you doing, everybody? Another another Baby Friday is upon us, or Friday Night Eve, as I also like to call them, is here, and the week is almost over. So happy early Father's Day to all you awesome dads out there here in America and wherever else you're listening to me as well. We have a, we have a pretty good show. We're going to talk a little bit of trash about movies and such. Uh, but before we get started, uh, this show is brought to you by the folks of Primerica. Have you, read, have you heard of the Rule of 72? Well, if you haven't, these are things that they don't teach you in school. What the Rule of 72 is, is that 72 is a constant number, and then you would divide it by whatever rate of interest your bank is giving you by your money sitting in a savings account, which pretty much the going rate, the average going rate is 0.001%. But let's just say that they were giving you a whole 1%. It would literally, if you divide 72 into one, it would, it would give you 72. That means that it would take 72 years for your money to sit at the bank and for your money to double. So I don't know about anybody here, but I don't have, I mean, I would love to live another 72 years, but I don't have that. I mean, that would be 122 years here uh, by the time it's all said and done. So obviously if you, uh, the lower, the, the higher the interest rate, the lower the time frame. So uh, just that, you know, between eight to 12%, it would take your money six years to double. So, I don't know about you, but I, th that's a pretty good number. So give, give the folks at Primerica a call. It's right there on the show bio. Uh, ask them the question, and they, they can show you how it is that your money grows. Because the bottom line is, is that I can have control right now and not you. I don't know about anybody here, but I'd rather have control and have my money work for me instead of the money working for the bank. This, also, this show is also brought to you by AC, by Castle Global Services. At Castle Global Services, they have an array of many different services for your home and residential. So if you have a business, they have a great product that it's called Sphere. Sphere is uh, a way of taking in credit cards. So if you're if you're one of those people that have a side, a side business that you do something on the weekends and you're making more than $500 uh, a month, uh, taking in, uh, income and you, or you don't, you currently have a credit card uh, provider, like something that's kind of square ish that you go through your phone. They, the rates on those things are very, very high, but with sphere, they're very competitive. It's, uh, just go ahead and follow the show, the show link bio right there at castleglobalservices.acnideal.com and go to the sphere, uh, option. And somebody will contact you and they have a great product right now with through sphere that hey if you want to better if they can't beat your current rates they'll give you a 250 dollars gift card to amazon or cash or whatever i mean if they don't beat your rates i mean you got 250 free 250 out of it so i don't know, give them a call and the show is also now being sponsored by the va so here's an awesome message from the va Hi, I'm Mike Richmond of the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs with this message for veterans. Are you seeking to honor those who have served and sacrificed for their country? Visit the Veterans Legacy Memorial. This digital platform, run by VA's National Cemetery Administration, is dedicated to the memory of nearly 4.5 million veterans interred at VA's national cemeteries, VA's grant-funded tribal, state, and territory cemeteries, and two U.S. National Park Service cemeteries. The memorial's interactive features allow people to remember veterans by posting tributes and comments, uploading images, and sharing a veteran's military timeline, achievements, biographical information, historical documents, and more. Over 45,000 submissions have been made to the existing profile pages since the site was launched. That's the Veterans Legacy Memorial. I'm Mike Richmond. Thanks, Mike Richmond. 
Yeah, it's a it's a pretty cool thing that to have, you know, one as a you know those type of benefits uh, as a service member. So go ahead and go to the VA website, check more information for that because mine is one. Uh, right now is the time, as, and I keep saying this every show. Right now is the time to put in to these death benefits. I mean, those could be very quickly on the. Phone. So it may provide some re- uh, in in, in regard to your families as well. So give them a call. Last but not least, this show, we wouldn't be here and would not be not here in the interweb if we didn't have, if we, if we didn't support and, you know, have the great American constitution. So I supported the, the constitution. I still do. I fought for it in every climate place, as you can say, over 21 years. So we're the freedom of speech, the right to bear arms, and all, and all that stuff. So what does that mean is that, hey, if you like this show, like, subscribe, and follow. Go ahead and share us with your friends. Let somebody know because we do pass some, pass some good gouge up in here. And uh, and if you don't, then that's fine. That's, that's you right as well. Go ahead and swipe left. Check something out from Citrator.com. They got a bunch of good stuff on there. So like Come by Bed Vision, I podcast that, Todd the Bow Show, and a bunch of other cool stuff on there. So. All right. Well, that's it. We we got pretty much done with all the, you know, all the logistics and 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 sponsors and such. So now let's get down to the nitty gritty. So, as uh, I love a good you know a good war movie, uh, especially uh, I guess you could say, as we get older, we like older stuff. Now, when I was younger, I mean, I mean, I, hey, I knew who John Wayne was. I love John Wayne. Uh, obviously, the Duke, but you know. You know, if you watch movies like some of the great movies like The Dirty Dozen, uh, Wild Geese of War, which is, uh, well, I, I saw, I remember seeing that one as a kid in, uh, when I was growing up in Colombia. And I freaking fell in love. What a, what a great, you know, cast. Obviously, I saw a movie in the late 70s, early 30s. Obviously, it was, you know, beyond when the movie was first released. But nonetheless, great movie. Anyways, but, uh, you know, those movies are all great uh, and dandy, but <laughs> watching a, a military movie with a service member is the, uh, I, for a civilian, I think, is the worst, <laughs> is the worst thing because we just nitpick the shit out, especially even more, more recent movies or as I guess within the last 10, 15 years, uh, we nitpick at the shit out of these movies just to find point wrong, you know, things that are, that are wrong out. Uh, uh, you know, with the John Wayne movies and such, you know, he gets a pass, obviously, because that's the Duke. You know, if you see it. one thing that I don't know how the other servers are, but I know in boot camp and stuff like that, if you were walking around with your with your helmet, you know, we call it a helmet, but it's actually your, with, your Kevlar, with your Kevlar helmet on, walking around with a chin strap off, I mean, you would have gotten berated and just obliterated by your drill instructor. You know, basically, excuse me, basically screaming at you saying, you know, who do you think you are there, recruit? You know, you're not freaking John Wayne, blah, blah, blah. That's just something that you don't do. You're not, we're not nasty like that. Again, I'm speaking, <laughs> speaking from the Marine Corps. Don't know how the Army and all the other armed services uh, do things, uh, especially going through boot camp. They probably go out, you know, on Liberty and sing Kumbaya songs, some, you know, some gay shit like that. <laughs> Uh, whereas in the Marine Corps, you just get pretty much ha- ha- hazed and amazed, right? So, anyways, uh, yeah, so we don't walk around. So, things like that, you know, we point things out. Uh, if you see somebody in, in a uniform, you, you automatically start looking at how are the ribbons placed? How, you know, if, you know, is, are the ribbons in the right order, uh, in, a, in, in their medals and whatever. I, you know, a lot of times, you you know, one of the things that, that, that you see all the time is that, you know, they'll have really long hair uh, and, and they're wearing their uniform. If it, even if it's Marine, you know, you they'll have really long hair. Some of them were like, oh, hell no, that that shit doesn't happen. I know the beard thing, you know, especially if they're wearing civilian clothes, they'll, they'll have like a, you know, like beard like 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 I have right now. I know this because I know there are there are Marines. And service members who, when they go home on liberty and whatever, they just lose their fucking minds and they become all nasty. And, uh, you know, they get, you know, they, they grow their, uh, you know, whatever, which, uh, yeah, I mean, my personal opinion is just you're Marine 24-7 and that's kind of, and, you know, I, it was embedded in me, you know, 
uh, I was that guy that would correct out, uh, uh, so, you know, somebody who was nasty at the PX and I would just, you know, unfuck him for lack of better words, but whatever. So, you know, I was watching the movie, uh, by the way, I was watching the movie, the Marine, uh, the other day, uh, actually I, I just saw an ex, uh, just a, a little bit of it and I was just watching it. and shout out, you know, nothing again, John Cena is a man. And by the way, thank you, John Cena, because if anybody here wants to watch the, the uh, special features on on the movie The Marine, you might see yours truly come out on it, uh, especially because they they held the uh, the red carpet. <clears throat> that movie was actually released at Camp Pendleton for, uh, when they did the red carpet release and everything. So John Cena was there. This is when he was still part of the WWE. WWE. Uh, so Triple H w was there. Um, the the girl i think it's kelly kelly brox i think this is his co-star in this movie she was there she was she was the the wife and in, in the tv show nip tuck back in the day so she was there i got to meet her i got to shake john cena's hand so just a really quick story before we start talking shit about the movie but so i was a recruiter and uh back then this is in uh oh six time frame and um you know, we recruiters back then, we, we, you know, the internet was, you know, was available and whatever, but we didn't have laptops still at, at the office because, you know, they just didn't want us to have uh, or internet in the office. So anyways, a fax came through for those of you who know what a, what a fucking fax is, a fax came through, Hey, John Cena is going to be releasing a movie this afternoon, blah, blah, Camp Pendleton. And I was the first, I was like, shit. So my way there, I was, you know, I was, you know, I, I called my kid's mama at the time. Hey, I'm picking up the kids from school. We're going to go see John Cena, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, I got him out of school early. Yes, I'm an awesome parent like that. Very responsible. Got him out of early so we could go see John Cena. And I was in my recruiter outfit. And I went with another fellow recruiter. And, uh, you know, we were taking, you know, we had this before camera phones and stuff. But I was taking photos of my digital camera. And uh, John Cena, he got out of a Humvee that was super shiny. Now, as a, as a Moto T guy, basically, they made this fucking Humvee super shiny. They got basically what they did is brake fluid and they wrote because the Humvee is not supposed to be that shiny for, for first of all. But they cleaned this motherfucker up just for John Cena and, uh, and his co-star. So anyway, John Cena gets out and uh, he's shaking his hands and, uh, you know, it's a, right there at the base theater. And uh, I I remember this like yes I got a captain and a fucking major I don't know I did a Heisman I was a staff sergeant I was like Heisman and I and I was like John what's up man how about a how about a photo for the recruiting effort and John Cena looks at me he goes how about it bro and we take a selfie I grab my camera and I take a selfie and I mean I got this big smile I'll post the photo here after the show uh, I'll put it on there. But basically, I put this captain in, this, and they looked at me like I was growing a dick out of my forehead. Basically, saying, you know, like who is this staff sergeant? But I was a recruiter, you know. I didn't give a shit, man. I thought I was Superman wearing my recruiter outfit. And then after everybody went through, I shook hands with Triple H and all these other people from the WWE, WWF. So we went back around where the Humvee parked right there on the, on the street, and then there was this Marine, you know, like an MP. Because we we're gonna we we're gonna go inside and, and get good front row seats, and uh, this marine stops me and like, hey sir, you can't go, you can't go, you know, this is blah blah. And he looks at me, he's like, hey, staff sergeant, don't you live in my neighborhood? I'm like, yeah, man, it's me. He's like, oh, go ahead, man. So <laughs> clearly, we're walking. My my son and daughter and I and the other marine, we're walking on the red carpet. We're shaking hands. We're making it happen, like like we belong there. I'm shaking. Hey, thanks for stopping by. This after the base general walked by. So we're shaking hands, shaking babies, you know, all that good shit. So moving time forward after the movie was released on DVD, somebody said, hey, man, did you? And I was going through officer candidate school as a warrant officer. They're like, hey, man, did you know you were in a movie? I'm like, get the fuck out of here. For real? Yeah. So basically, I'm on the special features right there, the red carpet at Camp Pelton. So you might see this dude right over there. Anyways, so you see them uh, on the movie, The Marine. The opening scene where they have the, you know, the the the, the Marines who are uh, are uh, being held hostage, and then John Cena comes through, obviously, and starts kicking ass and all this other shit. First of all, that shit doesn't happen, okay? Uh, before you go on an operation, I mean, a bunch of shit has to happen. I mean, 
in, in the back end that, you know, you got to turn in rosters. You can't leave outside the wire. And then you're going to Iraq, uh, you know, on your own. Do you know it? I mean, you somebody would have caught you along the way because there's no fly zone unless you're going to do some dumb shit, which has happened um, where people go across the border, um, uh, you know, to Iran and Iraq and all these other countries, which is highly, un, you know, not recommended. But then, you know, John Cena goes in and then they, this, after he rescues all these people, and you know, with a helicopter, which by the way, it's it's a rented Russian gunship, which that shit doesn't happen. Uh, you know, they, they move time forward, and he's like supposedly Cam Cam Lejeune, and he's getting dismissed from the Marine Corps. And he's wearing one, he's wearing you know his cami trousers. Uh, they're not even I think they're just tucked in in his boots, the wrong color T-shirt, which we don't you know we stop wearing uh, the brown shirts. I think is what he's wearing in in the movie. No belt, which. It's fucking unheard of because, you know, we always wear belts. I mean, Marines, we always wear belts, even on Liberty. So, I mean, it just he's just plain all fucking nasty. So that shit doesn't happen. So as we're watching the movie, when the movie was airing, people are screaming all the And John Cena and them, everybody, you know, all those VIPs are sitting up front. And just a bunch of Marines screaming, yeah, he's got no belt, you know, blah, blah, blah. How nasty. And I'm just laughing my ass off. So, you know, things like that. And then obviously the fight scene where he's a civilian at work. You know, why is it that they always portray service members that, yes, you know, a lot, of, even yours truly has PTSD uh, and all those things that that I battle with. But I don't look, now there may be people who have lost their shit at work, but those are like a dime a dozen uh, and you know that that do that. not all of us are pretty much you know fucked up like that that ah oh, that you know we're just so gun ho and all that all, all that stuff about movies so that movie right there uh pretty much is is one that you know I was you know we love picking you know picking up uh, this uh, the things that obviously you know if you watch movies like of again I'm kind of going over some older movies a few good men which that movie was released when I first, uh, uh, a few months before I came into the Marine Corps. Obviously, Tom Cruise always displays himself, you know, wearing one badge. And then in that movie, he's, you know, for those of you who haven't watched it, Tom Cruise, a lieutenant in the in the Navy, who's trying to investigate a crime within the Marine Corps. Uh, and Jack Nicholson is is a is a is a, is a colonel that's on court for what happened. And uh, there's one scene where you know. I, you know, I want you, I want the truth. I, first of all, you know, I've been, I, I've, unfortunately, I've sat at many court, you know, at a couple of court marshals uh, in my time frame, and uh, it shit just doesn't happen like that. First of all, you know, usually the person that's it, you know, the magistrate or the, the, uh, the judge, the one sitting on the bench is usually uh, at a minimum a lieutenant colonel, usually a full bird colonel. Especially, in, and if you have a high-ranking officer, obviously you're going to have a high-ranking officer sitting at that. At, so it just for, for a lieutenant to be screaming at, at a colonel, I mean, that shit ain't going to happen. I mean, that lieutenant would have gotten hazed and amazed uh, and obliterated by somebody, regardless of, you know, the, you know, the person who's sitting uh, on, on, the, on the defendant seat, whatever, you still got to give that individual their, their due respect. Um, and a couple of the ones that I sat, it was... Obviously, it was Marines that either were part of my unit or worked under me. And, you know, they went to court martial. Uh, even, you know, they were respected as such, uh, you know, when in, in these court proceedings. And obviously, you know, it, it would be especially if they were the ones who were in trouble, it would be in their best interest to behave and things like that. So as not to get a higher uh, some some type of punishment. OK, so and then obviously. You know, like the movie Top Gun, <clears throat> you see, uh, I love Top Gun. And the obviously the first one was even better, you know, obviously was even better. Uh, moving time forward, uh, you know, it just, things like that just don't happen where, oh, you know, it's kind of like all these individuals and they're just so gung-ho. First of all, if you're going to go on a mission, uh, you know, on an operation like that, there's just a whole bunch of shit that goes on the back end. And then we are governed by the Geneva Convention, so the R our ROEs or rules of engagements uh, are just insane as to when you can and pull, uh, when you can and cannot pull trigger uh, on something, and because especially if you're using uh, things like 
you know, gunships, fighter jets, all that type of stuff. And you know, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a pilot, but I played once. In, I, I played one once in the Marine Corps. No, I'm just kidding. I, I wasn't a pilot, but I, I worked through, you know, and supported a lot of them in my time frame as as a motor transport officer, especially when I was with the squadron uh, at 372. So shout out to all my uh, alumni from 372 back in the day. But yeah, there's a lot of things that go on uh, when you're using the, all that type of equipment because, you know, there are things I was like, hey, fuck, you know, I can start a, you know, an individual can start a war just like that. Uh, so, you know, when you see those type of things that happen and, you know, and the way that, you know, that, they survive and eject it and then they steal another fucking airplane. And look again, great movie. I, I love that movie. I like the action, the, the cinema, the cinematron, the cinematronics that was used in the te technology fan fucking tastic. But in the real world, that shit just doesn't happen people. Okay. So I just, I just, I just want to point that out. So, and then, uh, you know, another, another, another great movie that, uh, you know that if you're not a marine, if you haven't seen Heartbreak Ridge, uh, a, a Full Metal Jacket is fantastic. Uh, with, for example, with Full Metal Jacket, great movie, Stanley Kubrick, you know, one of Stanley Kubrick's uh, greatest movies. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, things about like punch, you know, you, you got uh, Arlie Ermy, which may he rest in peace, uh, very, very well known marine himself. Uh, he's done a lot of great movies. The guy, you know, a veteran representing the Marine Corps out there, Vietnam veteran at that. So, uh, however, not uh, not in my lifetime or when I went through. Even though, I mean, we used to get thrashed and all kinds of other dumb shit. I mean, I never got, I never got, I don't recall walking into a fist or anything like that of the sort. Because bottom line is, is that. Again, I'm just speaking from my experience. Some other people, when they went through, that shit might have happened. However, uh, you know, even though it, it seemed like, oh, man, I'm, I'm going to get, you know, <laughs> obliterated by my drill instructor. They were, you know, they were very professional. You know, there's a purpose for everything, especially in an environment like that where they're trying to put stress on you. So you can, because everything has a purpose, especially if you're going on combat. But in, in the movie, obviously, uh, Gunnery Sergeant Hartman, uh, you know, he he punched the shit out of uh, uh, Joker, the recruit, in, in that one scene. And obviously, um, you know, when um, uh, and, and then he choked him or choke yourself. And then obviously, you know, the the guy who uh, played, uh, I forgot the actor's name, uh, Vincent D'Onofrio, who was on uh, Special Victims Unit. And, and what's the one? Just... The one for the doink doink at the end and shit and then not in the early 2000s anyways uh you know they haze this kid up to the point where he ended up pretty much you know killing the drone instructor and uh, shooting himself but you know those type of things movies like that we you know i'm always leery it's like ah oh, man how am I gonna? so because but i love watching movies like that with uh, with other service members because we just rip the shit apart out of it uh you know and it, it's just a good time. And, you know, in the end, we laugh at it. I mean, it's good entertainment value. Uh, but I have yet to see, um, you know, a really good uh, military-made movie in the last um, couple, couple of years, you know. So, but nonetheless, I highly recommend, you know, recommend watching The Marine for good entertainment value. John Cena is a, is a big-time military supporter. Uh, the guy has done uh, a lot. He he visits bases and all all those things. And uh, I've met the, I've met the guy, uh, and you know, really cool dude. Really really good people and such. Uh, especially in the day and age where, um, you know, nowadays you know us military service members or the military is not that popular because of the times. However, uh, you know, I always have if somebody does good by by us service members, you know, I like to thank them for it as well. So. But, you know, great movies like I highly recommend if you haven't seen them just for all time's sakes. Obviously, any John Wayne related movie, you know, it, it, it's great. Uh, you know, The Dirty Dozen, cannot, it's got a great star cast of, you know, folks who have passed, but some of them are still al alive. Like Clint Eastwood is in that, in that movie. Um, you know, among, among many, many others. So I just can't, can't, th can't think of them uh, as well right, right now. And then, you know, familiarize yourself with Heartbreak Ridge, Full Metal Jacket, 
you know, those are some really good, good movies right, right there that in, in obviously a few good men is, is really, I think it's one of, you know, a really good movie. Uh, and not, not just because it's just, a, you know, about Marines and such, but it's just, it's a really well-made, really strong cast and such. So just check this out. So that's your homework for the weekend. Anyways, everybody, um, that's it for today. If you got any movie suggestions or things like that, that you know that we, we can talk about next time, and I'll put in some clips. Uh, we can definitely talk shit about it and just rip it apart. Uh, just a, all in, all in good fun, you know. So, but before I get going, if you've been struggling with with uh, depression, ruminate, uh, ruminating thoughts, just going to that dark hole, just know that the bottom line is, well, uh, you know, push up, 22 push up a day and all those other challenges out there in support of vet veteran suicide are all fine and dandy, but it doesn't replace that individual. So reach out to me, uh, send me a DM, <clears throat> reach out to the, uh, to TRICARE, Military One Source, uh, the suicide hotline, because it won't replace any, all of us that stay behind. We're just asking ourselves the question, how we could have, have helped you uh, get out of wherever you're at. So uh, with that being said, everybody, I think we're going to end Dex over here. So Dike, Max, hoorah, get some, and I'll see you next time. Yes. I'll catch you later, folks.